Thank you, President. President, with his proposals for a Mediterranean Union, President Sarkozy recognized what many people knew but would not admit, that the Barcelona process, top-down, driven by European interests, was dead, leading our southern partners to opt out and a widening prosperity gap to emerge on either side of the Mediterranean. If Europe is serious about reversing the failures of the last decade and generating development and security on its southern shores, we must learn to give as well as to take. We must build on the ashes of Barcelona a true partnership based on trust, reciprocity and, above all, mutual respect. The Mediterranean should be not a cultural dividing line, but a meeting place. Joint investment in infrastructure, such as ports, sea links, energy grids that the Commissioner spoke about, will bring our peoples together far more effectively than the high-sounding declarations which characterized the Barcelona process. We need investment in people, too. The kind of energy which brought together the French and German peoples after the last war must be invested in bringing Europeans and North Africans together to prevent the next. The worst possible mistake the French presidency could make is to commit the Union and by extension its citizens to a grandiose project without providing the finance for such cooperation for a number of years down the line. And creating a full-blown bureaucratic structure alongside the standing delegations and the external action service as Mr. Schultz said, need not be the way. A focus on values must be. Despite the worsening situation, particularly in Egypt and Israel, and the fact that we claim such values as the basis of our foreign policy, references to human rights are mysteriously hard to find in the Commission's proposals. And I hope this is something the Commission will look at. But these objections aside, my group is pleased to show its support for the European uh, sorry, for the Union for the Mediterranean, with one important caveat. Pragmatic cooperation on economic issues must not be a substitute for promoting peace in the Middle East through the foreign policy envisaged in the Lisbon Treaty. Since the Commissioner stressed the link between economic development and peace, what better sign of goodwill towards our Arab neighbours than abolishing agricultural tariffs? Our much-vaunted free trade agreements have failed to boost living standards because they excluded agriculture and services which account for two-thirds of the GDP in the Middle East and North, America, uh, and North Africa. If we don't take the produce of these countries, we will end up taking their people. Reforming the CAP, providing a level playing field for their goods, would go a long way to tackling the root causes of record migration into Europe. President, as the inimitable Dr. Johnson once said, life cannot subsist but by reciprocal concessions. And for the sake of the success of this union, Europe must make the first move.